Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Seven months ago, I put out a video discussing whether or not Canada is in a housing bubble. So where are we now a few months later? Well, the average home price in Canada has gone up about 10% just in the past seven months alone, which means that for the average homeowner in Canada, their net worth has gone up around $80,000, which is way higher than the average Canadian annual income, let alone the income for seven months. And now inflation is running red hot. Whether it's gas, food, or home heating, the cost of living in Canada is skyrocketing. And that issue is inflation. But what real people call it is cost of living. How much it, how much it costs you to do uh, and buy the things that are most important in your life. And we're seeing that and concerns about that really starting to rise. I think inflation is a big worry and it looks like it's going to be not transient, but uh, it's gonna be stickier uh, as, as the Fed chair said. With that, there's talks of rising interest rates in the coming months. So what happens with real estate? Stay tuned for my take on that. Before we get started, I'm going to ask if you can please click the like button as that really helps the video's performance. I really appreciate that. This really helps to get the content to more people so that they can also benefit from this information. Okay, so I'm going to preface this again by saying that none of this is intended to be investment advice. This is all just my opinion and I'm definitely not an economist or a financial advisor. Talk to your professional advisor as everyone's situation is different. Okay, so currently inflation levels are through the roof with the October numbers clocking in at 4.7% in Canada with the consumer price index. Many experts feel that these numbers are manipulated and that the true rate of inflation is actually well over 10%. Regardless, I'm sure many of you feel the real pinch of unstoppable rising prices from food to gas, renovation materials, and even used cars. Remember when you paid $6 for lunch? Now it seems more like 15 bucks. And don't forget our favorite measure of inflation. You guessed it, housing. The average price of a home in Toronto is now a whopping $1.1 million. With all this inflation discussion and the soaring property prices, it's inevitable that we begin to hear rumblings of interest rate heights again. Currently, the Bank of Canada's key interest rate is sitting at a quarter of a percent. The current five-year fixed mortgage rate for 30-year amortization is around 2.5%. The variable rate can range anywhere between 0.9 to 2.15%, depending on how much of a discount you can get off the prime rate of 2.45%. Because of the impending rate increases, many people are thinking of locking in fixed rates. You're gonna to have to figure out what works best for you. So we're hearing that there could be as much as eight interest rate hikes that are set to start as early as spring 2022. And if that happens, it will definitely pop the housing bubble. Or will it? Huh? Well, I think the first question to ask is how big are these rate increases going to be? Are we talking eight increases that are a quarter of a percent each or half a percent each? That's going to make a big difference. Because if rates only go up a total of 2% in the next couple of years, and we're living in an environment where official inflation sits at 5% or even 10% unofficially, I don't think 2% is going to make much of a dent in bringing down real estate prices given the supply constraints and high demand. Now, if the Bank of Canada rates go up to 5% or even higher, then that's a different story. I just can't see a scenario where that is likely to happen given the extreme debt levels that the government themselves are in, whether federally, provincially, or at the municipal level. If rates went that high, the government themselves are at risk of defaulting on their own obligations. Their only option at that point is to keep printing more money to support these payments, which drives inflation even higher. I wrote a detailed blog post outlining this recently. You can check it out below with the link in the description. So I think our policymakers' hands are a bit tied. Given the amount of inflation out there, I think they have no choice but to raise interest rates, but it's probably going to be minimal. Just that narrative alone might be enough of a negative sentiment to slow the market down just a little bit. With property prices going up anywhere between 30 to 60% since the beginning of the pandemic, depending on which city or town you're in, I think it's probably time for a breather, which may happen in 2022, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But I don't expect it to have any real long-term effectiveness in bringing real estate prices down, primarily because we're still in the latter parts of this long-term debt cycle. There's a link in the description which explains what the long-term debt cycle is. This debt cycle requires more and more debt to keep the system going, which ultimately gets plowed back into tangible assets like real estate, especially modest residential properties. Real estate is now a huge portion of Canada's GDP, so I don't think there's any real appetite from the government to intentionally drive it down. 
So given what we know about inflation and what the responses are likely to be, it might be prudent to anticipate you know, a flat market or even a slight pullback in 2022. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it might be wise to plan as though it is. If that doesn't happen and the market continues to be on a tear, then think of it as a bonus if you already own real estate. As always, to be on the conservative side, my approach is to expect that the market won't go up or possibly even go down a bit in the short to medium term, but the goal is to mitigate that with strategies to force appreciation on the property. Your strategy may be different, but my approach as I'm looking to acquire property is to apply what I like to call the forced value ladder. So there are four parts to this, and each one gets progressively more profitable as you climb up. The first rung of the ladder is cosmetic improvements, which includes upgrades like new kitchens and bathrooms, paint, flooring, making it open concept and exterior curb appeal. The second is adding in additional legal second suites to add value and immediately boost cash flow opportunities. The third is adding another suite, and this time as a detached garden suite in the backyard. These are known officially as accessory dwelling units, but are also commonly referred to as coach houses, laneway suites, and granny flats because they're actually perfect for granny to live in and be close to the family. And finally, land severances and new builds. This is not as common, but there may be opportunities to sever your land into additional lots and build more houses. This is an extremely lucrative strategy if you're able to find the right property. I would typically try to apply two or more of these four strategies to every property that I'm considering purchasing. As you can see, focusing on force appreciation strategies allow you to remain in control even if there's a downturn in the market. In the last housing bubble video we did back in April, we also outlined eight items to increase your chances of success on any given project that you embark on. I'm just gonna quickly outline these eight items here. Number one, choose the right city or town to invest in with good local fundamentals and a progressive approach to housing opportunities at the public level. Number two, go through municipal websites to identify specific areas of public investment that will likely drive value hires for certain areas compared to other areas in that city. For example, transportation upgrades or business improvement areas. Number three, invest in modest entry-level properties that would be more insulated from an economic downturn. So I like simple single family homes. Number four, a property that I can force appreciation to that I have direct control over, which of course I covered earlier with our forced value ladder. You know, I can't do that with a condo or a small commercial unit. Number five, look for creative cash flow strategies. Can a portion of the property be rented for other uses? Number six, add additional legal units, and that's also what we covered in the forced value ladder. Number seven, purchase during slower periods of the seasonal cycle when possible. That's like Christmas time in the winter and vacation time in the summer. Number eight, try to negotiate a better price to create a win-win scenario with the seller to provide flexible closings and anything to make things a little bit easier. Of course, given the supply constraints, this is quite challenging these days, but try the best you can. Okay, so that covers everything that we want to discuss today. In summary, it looks to me like this inflation is here to stay for a long time and it might be wise to invest in things that can hedge against that. I personally feel it's risky to hold any large amounts of your wealth in cash or low yielding bonds. With still very low interest rates historically and high inflation, you're actually losing value every year in cash and bonds. My best guess is that the policymakers have no choice but to raise interest rates a little bit very soon. I don't think it's going to be a huge amount, maybe a total of one or one and a half percent in the next six months to a year and a half. The stock market might even throw a tantrum and they'll be forced to dial it back down to zero. Now, keep in mind that also our policymakers in Canada aren't really in the driver's seat. They'll be following closely on what the U.S. Federal Reserve is doing. So that's my take. Again, I could be entirely wrong. This is just my own opinion. So what are your thoughts? Do you think that interest rates are going to go up significantly or are they gonna stay low? And why? Do you think inflation is transitory as they say or do you think that it's here to stay? I'd love to hear your comments below. I'll be sure to respond to everyone. Until next time, all the best and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to learn more about investing in housing densification, and how you can get involved, hit that subscribe button. I put together a beginner's guide and also a handy eight point checklist that covers everything you need to know about adding a legal second suite. We cover important bylaw and building code requirements for cities in Ontario and all the design considerations you need to make to successfully complete your project. You can download that through the link in the description below. Until next time, to your success.